G'day, g'day, and welcome to Pints with Aquinas. My name is Matt Fred, and today I'm joined around the bar table by Jonathan Rumi, who plays our blessed Lord in the excellent series Chosen. We're going to chat with him for about 20 minutes about what it's like to play our blessed Lord. Uh, then we're going to take some questions from our patrons and super chatters, so please be sure to stick around for that. Also, we're like nine, almost at 96,000 subscribers, so if you would help push this channel over the 100,000 uh, subscriber mark that would be awesome so please be sure to subscribe click that bell button and also do us a favor uh, if you want to support this channel and support this video go go share this right now right now on Facebook or Twitter or wherever you do your sharing and that will see to it that you know the max number of people see this excellent bloody interview it will be excellent just to be clear. Um, okay, look, hey, before we begin, I want to say thank you to Exodus 90. Exodus 90 is an, a spiritual exercise for men. You basically take 90 days and uh, just not enjoy your life, in all honesty. Uh, not necessarily true, but, you know, you give up alcohol, you give up sweets, you give up snacks in between meals and things like that. Um, cold showers, these sorts of things. Why would I do that? I hear you ask. So you can grow in your relationship with our blessed Lord. So here's what's happening. In 28 days, 6 hours, 53 minutes and 40 seconds, 39 seconds, 38 seconds, there's going to be a ton of guys around the world who are going to be starting Exodus 90. And the reason it begins on January 4th is so that it can end at Easter. So if you want to take your faith to the next level, click that link below, exodus90.com slash mattfrad, exodus90.com slash mattfrad. At least put in your name and email address to get more information. If you want to take your spiritual life to the next level, this is a great way to do it. Exodus90. Dot com slash Matt Fred. Jonathan Rumi, how's it going? Hello, sir. Good. How are you? I'm very well. It's nice to see your face. It's nice to see your face. In fact, yeah. actually, uh, it's uh, twice in two days because I was watching you yesterday talk to uh, Eric Ibarra about uh, Greek Orthodoxy. Um, and uh, I don't know if you knew this, but I was baptized Greek Orthodox and wow. then raised uh, as a Catholic for my first communion and uh, confirmation. And so I figured I'd, I'd uh, where better than to learn more about the faith and adjunct faiths than through pints with Aquinas. And uh, I got as far as, uh, hello, I'm Eric Ibarra. And I was I'm like, the rest was like. Whoa. Oh, really? Yeah. Well, <laughs> he's a smart a dude. Of, it was me too. I was just pretending to understand. Dense. There's a lot of dense information about uh, the histories that I had no idea um, but it was beautiful. It was lovely, and it was so informative. So um, I think I think I held on to a couple of bits and bobs, um, hopefully. Um, but yeah, at the end of the day, now, here we are as Catholics. Yeah, baptized Eastern Orthodox. You're obviously a practicing Catholic now. Is was there any ever ever a choice there between kind of going back to Eastern Orthodoxy? Obviously, we love our Eastern Orthodoxy orthodox brothers and sisters but is there a, a reason you're catholic today and not eastern orthodox i think um after having i was so i was born and raised in new york city and um once we moved out of new york city into the suburbs they, there weren't a whole lot of uh, offerings as far as uh, greek orthodox communities and so my dad having grown up in egypt and having gone to catholic school uh, run by french jesuits as yeah. you did if you didn't go to public school um, it was a very easy transition to the church down the street, and um, he was familiar with it. My mother's Roman Catholic, uh, so we just kind of just transition transitioned very easily, and it just felt like home. And and of course, you know, I I had thought as my cousins who remain Greek Orthodox um, uh, were getting married and having kids and and witnessing the uh, marriages and the baptisms in the church and and the beauty of the the liturgy. Um, you know, it crossed my mind a couple of times, but I never, I, I never felt that I needed to, to, to go and right. read transition, you know, it, the yeah. Catholic church just felt like home for me. So, and, and increasingly so obviously the last several years. Beautiful. Well, for those who aren't aware, who is Jonathan Rumi and what is The Chosen? So The Chosen is the first multi-series, uh, multi-season TV series about the life of Jesus Christ and his disciples. And the concept is that if you got to know Christ uh, and see him uh, and saw him through the eyes of the disciples uh, and how they were moved by him, then we as audience goers could be moved by Christ and his teachings and his words and uh, the effect he had on 
the heart and the spirit as well. Um, and so we, um, so I'm, I play Jesus Christ. I, uh, it's been, we finished a, a season last year with season one. We're in the process of filming season two. Uh, we're about halfway done. We spent six weeks in Utah and then we'll be heading to, uh, Texas at the beginning of the year to uh, shoot out the remainder of season two. Um, and I think if, if folks have never heard of it, the best way to check it out would be to go to your app store or uh, Google Play and download the app called mm. The Chosen. So yes, the TV show is an app. Uh, it's brand new technology. This has never been done before. It's the first TV show to be accessed via an app for free that once you download it, if you have a, a smart TV or a smart device like Apple TV, Chromecast, Fire Stick, Roku, you can literally cast it from your phone, like a remote control, to your television and watch it on your TV for free. And um, you can download it there and, and check out season one. And then I think next Sunday, I believe that's the 13th, um, there will be a uh, The Chosen's doing a Christmas show. And they're going to show a teaser a teaser trailer of what we've shot so far of bits that we've shot so far of uh, season two. And uh, I, I heard uh, it, it looks pretty good, pretty fantastic. So I'm, I'm very excited to see what they've put together for the, for the trailer. But um, yeah, it's, it's, it's pretty, it's a pretty incredible concept. And the fact that it's been um, crowdfunded from the get go by uh, initially investors. And now uh, for season two, um, people wanting to back the project, just uh, the, the general public can literally watch the show for free. And then if they are moved by it, they can pay it forward for somebody else to watch it for free. And, uh, you know, with any kind of a contribution, because it costs money, as everyone knows, to stream. So uh, but that's this system, this pay it forward system has allowed us to completely fund season two. It's, uh, it's amazing. Oh, wow. I love it. Yeah. I love that it's free on the app, you know? I mean, yeah. this is really like, you, you, this is like the first Bible some people might actually read. Eh? They may have heard about Jesus Christ, but may have never picked up the New Testament. And they get That's to right. encounter it through you, first of all, which is really neat. Yeah, it's um, it's been pretty mind-blowing. Um, I still kind of, I uh, still do a double take at times and thinking and, and wonder to myself, how, how did this all mm. happen? But of course, um, you know, I just have to, uh, get on my knees and thank the man upstairs for uh, making the decision to allow me to use my gifts to serve him in a way that uh, is quite literal um, and and um, furthest from anything I could have imagined or anticipated. Yeah, it's funny. I remember hearing Rowan Atkins. Rowan Atkinson? Mm. Yeah, Rowan Atkinson. Atkinson. Yeah. Saying that when people meet him, they're kind of disappointed because they expect him to be like Mr. Bean. And I Mr. thought I, I, people must be really disappointed when they meet you because no matter how Super great Jonathan Rumi is, he's, he's hardly our blessed Lord. Hardly, hardly. Yeah. So I, I, I remind people, I kind of try to prep people whenever I do interviews or go online and just remind people of how um, terribly human and flawed that I am. And uh, and to lower your expectations and standards if you ever happen to run into me on the street, because you will be thoroughly disappointed. So, <laughs> well, I had an experience that I think most people or many people had when they heard about this show, right? So mm. I was upstairs doing something, and my son ran up and he went, "Hey, mom's watching this like Bible video thing on TV. You want to come and watch it with us?" And my immediate reaction was, "Not really." Like, yeah. <laughs> I'm sure it's not terribly good, and no. quite frankly, like even if it's like biblically accurate, like accurate to the story of the New Testament, I, I'm sure the art's not terribly good. And uh, I didn't say any of those things, but I was thinking those things. Like as I walked down, I sat down, and I I was like, oh, oh, oh my goodness, this awesome. this is this is actually good. Not just like this is great for a Christian production, but like yeah. no, this is high end and. And when you came on the screen, I mean, I was, I, I was okay. I'm not disappointed by this, but as soon as I see Jesus, I'm bound to be disappointed because like, there's no mm, way. Mm. You, you, but I have to say, I, in all sincerity, when I saw you, I was like, oh my gosh, that's fantastic! Like this, is, you did such a great job, and kudos to you for not doing the Jesus face or the Jesus voice. You know, I used to work for a ministry where we would put on these, uh, these uh, you plays mean the for high. Voice? He said, hello, the kind of dreamy, the, otherworldly, the far-sighted yeah, the, thing. Yeah, <laughs> yeah the, the, you're just the, you. The, you're just a dude. And it's, it's really it's really great. 
Thank you, man. Thank you. Yeah, we. Uh, you, I started working with Dallas Jenkins, the creator of the show. Uh, it'll be eight years this spring. And we, uh, he at the time was uh, directing films for his church's like media arm that would, uh, whenever they had a, a Christmas service or an Easter service, they would produce different projects and films. And, and so he did a film one Easter called The Two Thieves, which you can find on Amazon, uh, where he cast me as Jesus. And that sort of began our working relationship. And um, initially they were thinking about having it done in um you know, doing the whole thing in Hebrew. And then we realized that that was going to be quite a task. Actually, for me, it wouldn't have been that big a deal because I had five lines in the whole thing. So, uh, but for everybody else, it would have been quite, you know, it was a 25 minute film. Um, so they realized that wasn't uh, probably going to happen. Um, and so I, I offered that what I would at least do since we were going to transliterate it and, and, uh, and speak English with accents, I, I wanted to, approach and i had played jesus once before and i did this and i i figured this would be my sort of thing is to give jesus an appropriately regional dialect of you know of middle eastern you know um and and that's i basically pulled from two people my my aunt who's from uh, my my uncle's wife my aunt who's from uh, palestine and my father is from egypt so she's got a very thick accent he my dad's got a lighter accent so i sort of blend the two and that's kind of what became where the accent came from. And then that became the standard for the casts moving forward. They would send clips of, of my work from those church films with Dallas um, to the cast members to say, hey, this is use this as a as a baseline, um, which kind of keeps us all, you know, in within the ballpark. And then when I got to meet Shahar Isaac, who plays Simon Peter, um, I realized that like the 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 intonations and how how he pronounces the words i'm like oh and he's from israel i'm like oh okay this is like huh. he sounds like my aunt he sounds like like we're we, we're not too far off from each other so it was nice to kind of have a, a a living example of like yeah that that's pretty that's on that works and it's still consistent and like cool so that's that's sort of where we went with it you know did you have a beard prior to playing jesus um i uh, I had a, a, a smaller beard. Yeah, it was it was more clean shaven. Because you, you don't have it's not like you have an option to shave now. People would be pretty pissed, I, I imagine. Yeah, you... yeah. I I I uh, <laughs> I was up for something where, um, or I submitted uh, recently an audition, uh, while I was shooting for a character that only had a mustache, and he was a historical figure. He mm. only had a mustache and just a little. Bit of this little, going on. Little, little tuft. Yeah. And I was like, oh. Play this over. Well, yeah. <laughs> and so, uh, you know, I said to I said oh, to the okay. makeup artist, I said, if, <laughs> if it had to happen, uh, if I had to shave this and we had to put a thing and her eyes got really big and she's like, Dude, and I was like, I it just I just wanted to, luckily. I was asking for someone else. I didn't. Yeah, yeah. I was asking for a friend. Myself. Yeah. Asking for a friend. Uh, luckily, it never came to fruition. So a guy just like, nah, it's, we're not, we're not going to do that right now. Maybe after, um, right after, we wrap in, I think uh, fe February, uh, I might just trim it down or at least go back to scratch. Norm for ten years or the eight years previously out here, I more or less had a, a, a scruff for seven years, and then I grew it out a little bit, and then I started booking all these other characters like these Frenchmen and uh, I play a lot of Frenchmen. So, um, the, the beard kind of worked for Frenchies. So I kind of mm. kept it and then read for Dallas and I'm just like, well, looks like this is sticking around for a minute. <laughs> um, I know that, uh, Mel Gibson has spoken about some of the letters they received after the passion of the Christ was released, you know, people in jail who are having these conversions and things. What mm. are some of the stories you've heard from people who've seen the show and have been deeply impacted by it? Oh, one of the ones that comes to mind is um, people that have been suicidal. Uh, atheistic, suicidal are the two biggest ones that have had huge impacts on me. Um, people that like, there was, I think, I think there was this one letter that Dallas read it because he does these live streams um, to, to promote the show and raise money for help raise money for the show. And he, I think he read out a, a letter from a person that was an atheist 
and they kept and they were depressed and suicidal and they kept finding themselves being pulled to you know the the bible in some way and next thing you know they like either and I, I, I forgive my not being super specific about this memory but it was it's a version of this story where they saw somebody sat them down in front of the show or or they saw a, a enough like ads or something they're like what is this and then they they watched the show and and it completely just something opened up in them um it brought them out of this deep you know dark funk and uh, that person, I think, ended up getting baptized. That that wrote to him, and um, yeah, and and I, I've I've received a couple of emails like that before. People that were just lost, or a person that um, saw the the show who was suicidal, and it 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 gave them a reason to 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 live. You know, the message of Christ that is not me or the show or the right you know like the message and the spirit of christ and his message um gave them a reason for hope and a reason to to want to live and and to um you know just get to know him on a deeper level so um yeah we, we we've had a lot of correspondence like that i haven't met anybody in person yet um that that has expressed that but um you know i i know they're out there because they they've written to us Mm, glory to God, man. That's really beautiful. Praise God. Oh, yeah. That's a miracle. My friend Cameron Batuzzi wants to know how you stay humble playing Jesus. It's a good It's a really good question. Like that is, I mean, it's probably difficult for anybody who's acting, you know, to, and people come up to you, they tell you how great you are, how much you've impacted them. I mean, how do you stay humble throughout this? How do you seek to? I look in the mirror. <laughs> That pretty much does it, you know. Uh, I'm just like, what am I doing here, man? You know, um, and uh, I, and when I say that, I mean I'm reminded of my humanity and how, uh, as I alluded in the uh, at the onset of the interview, that um, I struggle. I I, I I sin like the rest of the world, uh, and and um, you know I. I deal with my own humanity on a daily basis and the things that I'm trying to get better at and keep, you know, floundering over. It's, it's still a struggle to, to live in this world. You know, uh, yeah. it doesn't being on TV or playing a certain character, playing Jesus deeply impacts your life. But when you're not playing that character, you're still you, you're still a human being that, gets you know offended and upset and has you know ideas and wants and needs and mm. and things and expectations of life that we don't always get met um experience loss uh, my family experienced a lot of loss in the last six months and um it's been uh it's a challenge but you know i i just i try to stay prayed up man and and i think that's kind of what I, that's what keeps me going. It's, it's, you know, by the spirit of God, you know, by the, by the, by the, um, grace of God and his Holy spirit. I, I, uh, he kept, he keeps me fed and, um, and humble. Hmm. Yeah. That's awesome. Well, we want to take, we want to spend a big chunk of this video taking questions. Uh, Sweet. so I, I want to get to that. But before I do, I have to say a word of thanks to Hallow, who I know you're a fan of as well as I. Mm. Oh yeah. May have read a couple of sleep stories. Yeah, a couple. A couple. Maybe maybe doing a couple of things with them coming up again soon. Ah, so yeah, they're uh, they're wonderful. I just did a live stream at the beginning of uh, their uh, of Advent with their. They've got this Pray yeah. Twenty Five challenge going on. Yeah. And uh, so I got to do a live stream with Alex Jones, one of the co-founders of Hallow, and it was just it was a good time. I got to pray at the Chapel of Divine Mercy, and it was it was awesome. I love them; they're awesome. Awesome. Well, I want to invite everyone to watch. Just to, who are who is what who I want to invite those who are watching to check out Hallow. <laughs> this is a fantastic app. It's just just like Chosen is very sophisticated. 
um, and, and Thoroughly Christian. This is a Thoroughly Catholic app. It's the number one downloaded app in the United States. Tons of five-star reviews. My wife and I use it, and we've been thoroughly impressed. They lead you through these different guided meditations, Lexio Divinas. Someone can lead you in the rosary. There was even some time where I would bring Hallow with me into Eucharistic Adoration when my mm. mind would just wander like crazy. I'd put in my little earplugs and, you know, let you can choose between this lady or this man lead you through this prayer experience by reading the scriptures to you and asking some questions about like, you know, what stood out to you, these sorts of things. Um, you can put Gregorian chant in the background and these sorts of things. Anyway, um, they have a permanently free version of their app. You guys can download it. Um, but if you want to get access to the entire app, you can go to hello.com slash Matt Frad below, click the link. And just by signing up there on the website, you'll get three months for free of the entire app. So you can try the whole thing out and see what you think. But um, it's an I don't awesome think you'll deal. be disappointed. Yeah. Yeah, they it's had, a great they had me deal read, we got. They had me read uh, Song of Songs. Did they? Yeah. My lover yes. stands behind the wall. <laughs> I don't know why I would speak like that. That's how Americans do my accent. So that's me doing their... My, like anyway. a Cockney. They're doing actually a Cockney accent, that's essentially. Right. <laughs> it's the David Brent. Yeah. Right then. In right, right in it. That's very good. Yeah. So, hello.com slash Matt Frad. Hello.com slash Matt Frad. Okay. Let's let's take some excellent questions that we've been that we've been receiving already. Yeah. Ah, oh, my goodness gracious. Here we go. Do you have your pint glass with you? I have. Did I send you one yet? Because I will if not. you want one. You did not. Of course, I want one. What kind I of will send question it. is that? I've got my little. <laughs> got some... <laughs> what are you drinking out of there? I've got this little mug from Utah, Zion. Nice. Says Zion. Nice. Yeah, a little. I didn't get to go to Zion. Yeah, yeah. This one, this uh, one's way no better. Zion. This one's That's way much better. better. So I'll send, I'll send that to you. Sweet. Look at um, that, dude. It's engra- is it engraved? Yeah, it's they, these are handmade one at a time in the United States. Uh, yeah, they're gorgeous. They're really gorgeous. Do you have? Do people order them, or do you? Just, I, it's like just... a pa- it's a patron gift. So when people support gotcha. the channel by supporting on Patreon. Thanks for that Perfect. softball setup too. For me, there you go. Yeah. You know, um, first question comes from Bart Upart. He says, "How has acting the role of Jesus changed your prayer life?" Uh, it's deepened it, for sure. It's deepened it. It's made me want to learn more about my faith. It's how I discovered you, Matt Fred, and Pints with Aquinas, and digging around for more information on uh, the Catholic faith and finding. Uh, various sources of information, especially about the early church. Mm. It's, um, yeah, it's, 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 it's deepened it in a way that, uh, that I, I, you know, if you asked me two years ago, when we start 2018, if you asked me two years ago where I thought I'd be with my spirituality, I, I, um, I, I wouldn't have said with this behind me, mm. you wouldn't, I would never have, in a million years, um, it just wouldn't have occurred to me. It just that there wasn't the same kind of passion fire. You know, I've got like three rosary bracelets on, so it's uh, it just kind of opened things up for me. I, and and that's yeah. a direct result of spending so much time with God and with His words and and uh, meditating on His Son. Really, you know. Mm-hmm. Uh, patron Evan Collins says, have you felt conflicted in any creative decisions taken in the show on how to tell a part of the story? I think I wouldn't, I wouldn't say conflicted. I would say that there were certain things that I thought were not as clear to me. And as a result, I thought maybe there would be ways to kind of play it so that it would be clearer to me. Because if it wasn't clear to me, then maybe it might not be clear to other people. So Mm -hmm. I wanted to always make sure, and I want to always make sure that I'm trying to uh, represent both sides of Christ, his divinity and his humanity, as balanced as I can, as balanced as the writing will allow me in a way that uh, it seems authentic. Whatever the spirit channels through me that people are getting from from watching this and, and, and receiving, I want to make sure to continue to, you know, discern and pray over it. And if there's if there are any kinds of things where I'm not clear, um, it's, it's simply a matter of asking my friend and creator of the show, hey, what do you think about if I play this like this? And 
more often than not, he'll be like, yeah, that's cool. Or let's try it. Or like, you know what, that doesn't work because this, 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 and this. And, and I'll realize like, oh, there's these other things that he wants to have happen that I wasn't aware of. I wasn't thinking about because when you're approaching a role, you're, you're not thinking of everybody else's role. You're not always, always thinking about the bigger picture as to what the overarching story is. And he knows what the story is from beginning to end. We don't, we get, season by season episode by episode um but he knows what the bigger picture is so i have to always defer to him and trust him and, and um and i think it's worked out really well mm -hmm. uh thank you uh patron uh rhiannon says which episodes or scenes did you find the easiest and or the most difficult to portray and did this surprise you <sighs> easiest and difficult um well on some level um they're all difficult because I think just trying to wrap your head around what it could be like to portray um, this, you know, sinless son of God on earth. Uh, <laughs> it's a bit of a conundrum that uh, from time to time will often trip me up. Um, and then I just got to sort of shake it off and go pray and everything will be cool again. Um, I'd say probably the most fun and, and the easiest would be uh, episode three with the children um, to a point, you know, anytime I was interacting with them, it was just fun and breezy. And then it gets a little heavier later on in, in one in that part of the episode. Um, so then like any scene that there's, there are challenges and, and uh, um, that wasn't without them. Um, but I'd say that was probably the, the lightest of all of the uh, episodes that I've filmed so far. Uh, most difficult, I think, Again, I think the difficulty is is the same as far as uh, technical aspects of the acting, um, spiritually, theologically, trying to make sure I communicated what I received from John three sixteen with the Nicodemus scene on the roof um, mm -hmm. was something that to me was like, okay, this is. This is a scene that I, I, I want to get it right. And, and um, you know, um, I'm reminded uh, Dallas is like, I think a couple of times, you know, he, he'll remind me. It's like, God's not going to let you screw this up. You know, God's not going to let me screw this up, it's referring to himself as well. You know, mm. we're here. We're, we just, we just got to show up with open hearts and, um, and just uh, commit ourselves to excellence in the way that we ha have tried to do. And the spirit will do the rest. But still, as a human, as an actor trying yeah. to do a scene, you're like, uh, you know, I, I want to make sure that at the very least in, in every scene that I'm exuding or trying to um, have as much compassion and tenderness and mercy as Jesus could have had in, in my very limited capacity to 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 do that with whoever my scene partner is. So if you and I are doing a scene I'm going to, Jonathan's going to look at Matt and just try to love on Matt uh, mm -hmm. to the best of my ability and, and see everything about you that is presented in your spirit and just try to just embrace that. And, um, and that's, that's kind of what my, my challenge is, um, as I'm playing him. So it, it forces you to be a better human, you know, you're just trying to be a better person mm -hmm. constantly. That's awesome. Uh, Michael Beaumert says, Jonathan, thank you for your truly incarnational portrayal of his humanity without turning him into a postmodern hipster <laughs> or an inaccessible <laughs> mystic. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, um, did, did you ever it, talk yeah. to Jim Caviezel about playing the role of Christ? No, no. It's. Uh, Do you ever accidentally aside... compare yourself to him? Do I accidentally? Yeah. No, no, I, I, I wouldn't know how to do that. Uh, um, um, that, that, that is the second most popular question after, uh, what's it like to play Jesus? And, uh, and I feel the more it's asked, the closer I'll get to actually meeting him yeah. because I would love to, to meet him at some point and pick his brain about this whole yeah. thing. Um, I know he, he, I know he knows of the project. I know he knows of me cause I know somebody who, um, had, uh, at one point reached out to him, um, to, to, to tell him about the show. Um, but, uh, it hasn't happened yet. And I, when the Lord appoints the time, I'm sure yep. somebody will just chuck us in a room and, and we'll figure it out. 
So my wife is watching, and so she's sending in a question Hi. to YouTube. She says, question cool. from Peter Frad, who is my six-year-old. Hi, Peter. He Hi, Peter. says, who plays Peter in your movie? Is he as nice as you? Does he love Jesus? <laughs> uh, Shahar Isaac plays Simon Peter. Um, uh, I've never asked him if he loves Jesus, um, He and he, and but he is as nice as... Uh, as me, if not nicer. He's a wonderful, wonderful human being with such a beautiful heart. And um, and he loves the role that he's playing in the story that we're telling. So, um, yeah, I'm, I'm very fortunate to be working with him. Awesome. Thank you. V. Stu says, thank you, Jonathan and Mr. Frat. That's fine. You can, the frat's fine. <laughs> These chosen <laughs> lives have been such a blessing. Who will send the ale to go with your new Stein? <laughs> Always. Uh, okay. So there you go. Uh, no one. I, I think in Georgia, it's probably illegal, I think, for me to just send alcohol to the mail. So you'll have to come up. With I might that. have to yeah. figure something out or just grab a glass of water and work on that for but, a minute. That's what I'm doing. I'm drinking water right now. So I feel like I'm, yeah. Well, this is Ra tea, so. Okay. Raj Vengali says, as an actor, how do you try to... <laughs> Oh man, I'm I'm really going blind. I don't know about you, but as an actor, how do you try I'm to fighting glasses, oh, yeah. man? I'm fighting it, fighting it. You remember that bit by Seinfeld about glasses and how they make they're supposed to make people look more intelligent? <laughs> do, you, do you know they do? It works. It works. He, he, he says like you know we look at people and think, wow, he must have read a lot of books, but you never look <laughs> at someone with a hearing aid and think that man must have heard a lot of good stuff. <laughs> I forgot about that one. Uh, Raj says, as an actor, how do you try to sort of get in Jesus's head? By the way, pretty much every episode makes me cry when I see Jesus interacting with the poor, ah, the lowly, the meek, and the lost. God bless. Mm. Um, I don't try. I never try to get in Jesus's head. It's just, it's, I mean, it's just, that's an impossibility. I just try to try to clear out my own head, clear out my own spirit and um just open my heart and the scene and try to be present with the person in front of me and um and then the rest is whatever the spirit lets happen rose black wants to know what your t-shirt says oh this is uh it's a harley davidson knockoff <laughs> it says jesus christ son of david love it yeah beautiful chris uh a Christian Salem or Salem says, "My girlfriend just finished her media degree. Any tips on getting a Catholic job with that degree? Huge fans of I didn't mean to laugh. Huge fans of you both from Canada. Um, hello Canada. Uh, a Catholic job. Uh, you know, a I uh, media there's, degree. there's yeah. I mean, I think there's you can start by going on Facebook, and there's a bunch of uh, I've seen a bunch of." you know, Catholic media outlets there. Um, I get it all depends on what you want to do. Um, media is so wide ranging. I'd say, um, depending on the specificity, there are a number of companies that, um, that are out there that are looking for people to get involved. Uh, at the end of the day, I think the first priority would, would be to just commit to a sense of excellence and, and want to, um, and, and ask God to show you, uh, her where where he wants her to be uh, it might not be with a catholic job catholic company but it might be something else that she can use her skill set for that will bring people closer to god um you know but it doesn't necessarily it may not necessarily be specifically catholic for instance this this show is not a catholic show this is right. a show made by an evangelical um and with a, a catholic actor and and evangelical actors and non-believer actors and crew people and, and awesome. Latter-day Saints and, and all mm -hmm. Pentecostals. Like it's a whole smorgasbord. There's Muslim. I mean, it's like, it's a huge family of people that just um, want to tell a really good story. And um, most of them are really connected to the story that we're telling just by proxy of seeing what's going on in the world and the reactions to the, to the show. So um, yeah, but prayer, I would start with prayer. Sounds like a good idea. Uh, mm. This person, his name is Nah Yeah, which makes me think they might be an Australian. I don't nah know. Yeah. yeah, Nah Yeah. Right. yeah. <laughs> Do you want to give us your best Australian accent while you're at it? Right. Uh, just I say don't welcome, have a lot just of, say welcome a lot to of points of, with Aquinas. 
Welcome to Pints with Aquinas. That I don't is. have a lot of, uh, you know, experience doing Australian, but uh, as I talk more, it will start to fall apart. That's <laughs> very good. <laughs> Whenever I try to do an American accent, I, ca- I, I can't do my R's, my tongue R's. doesn't make that. There thing. it is. <laughs> uh, Naye says, and this goes to what you were just talking about, on the set of The Chosen, did you mm. share your Catholic beliefs with those around you? And then maybe just to what you were saying a moment ago, like what's it like, you know, working with people of different faiths and, and no faiths? Um, you know, we don't specifically bring up our personal faiths on set. I mean, it's it's like working in in any other workplace. You kind of you kind of don't talk about it, but you know that if somebody asks you a question or you did talk about it, it's it's one of the few workplaces where it you know that most of the people there are pretty much of a similar persuasion. So that makes it easier. It also makes the uh, your ability and the, the the way in which you express yourself in the vernacular, like you know, saying things like you know, God willing, such and such will happen, or like praise God, I just got this thing and we did this scene and it was a blessing and that you know. So the 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 ways that people express themselves are much more um, God centered and mm-hmm. God oriented, which is not the case typically with most workplaces especially these days so there's a certain freedom in that that we uh enjoy as a result um second question oh what's remember. it like working with uh <laughs> you people of all different persuasions yeah uh it's i mean it's amazing it's there's i feel that we are in a, a time in history where ecumenism and unity through this community of believers in Christ is it should be the priority versus mm-hmm. the interdenominational dispute, right. or you know, uh, or or even Catholic denominational disputes right. that there are between like we left and right. We should begin with what we agree about, which is a great right. deal. Yeah, right. Yeah, and since we've been approaching it's just kind of naturally fell into this way of how people just uh, um, respect each other and, and honor each other and honor each other's and respect each other's differences. Uh, it's, it's created a, a, um, an atmosphere on set. That's just unlike anything else. Like it's, it's just one, it's been one pretty big happy family for uh, going on two years now. And it's it, every, like when I tell you like, the entire cast gets along with each other. Like we, we love each other. Like if you, you could just, people can go on social media and see photos of us, like a group of us and stuff. And it's just, it's a, it really is a love fest. And, and, and especially uh, it's great hearing from the newer actors that come on that like they were, they didn't know what it was going to be like. And they were assuming that maybe certain people, maybe even myself might be like this or like that. And yeah. then, to be completely like blindsided by the amount of uh, gregariousness and charity and, 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 and love has been, you know, just confounding them and, and defying every expectation they had coming onto a project like this. My daughter, Avila Frad, who's an Hi, awesome child, says, have you acted in other movies? What's your favorite besides The Chosen? Hmm. Uh, I have acted in a few movies. I've acted in more television shows than I have movies. Um, I'd say one of my favorite roles to have done was, well, two come to mind. One was very recently, just before everything shut down in March due to COVID, I got to play a heroin addict, uh, a British heroin addict on a show called Chicago Med which uh, which was great because I haven't gotten to do anything crazy like that in a long time. Um, Ten years ago, I did a staged version of Train Spotting, so I got to play a Scottish heroin addict. So that was really interesting. Uh, and then other than that, I think The Mindy Project, which was a show on Hulu, uh, I, I got to play a French doctor, uh, this, this uh, intense... French doctor on the second to very last episode of the series, which was just a trip that everybody on that show is like inhumanly funny. I, I don't understand how so many funny people can be collected on one TV show. So those are my two, I think, 
the two the two shows that come to mind. Beautiful, uh, Caitlin. Let me see if I can say this last name. Against my good judgment, I'm going to try. <laughs> Manalastus says, "Hi, Jonathan. sounded good. Thank you. You just got to say it with confidence." Kate, uh, Caitlin from uh, Kate, Caitlin from Calgary, Canada. Here, I'm one of your prayer warriors, and I join your divine yes. mercy prayers on Instagram. I'm inspired with your relationship with Mother Mary. Can you talk a little about that? Uh, I mean, what's not to love about the Mother of God? You know, uh, her um, her willingness to unconditionally say yes to God is, is something we should all aspire to uh, and and something I, I try to do and fail at miserably every day, but I try, you know, and, and she, um, I think uh, Dr. Scott Hahn put it this way in his book on Mary, what is uh, it? Um, I forget. I forget the name of the book. Forgive me. You probably Hail know Holy the name Queen, of the book. The book Hail Holy Queen. Yes, thank you. Uh, he 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 made this distinction that I had never thought about before. But she's the only woman in history to be the spouse of God, the mother of God, and the child of God, all mm, wrapped up into right. one. Which is just like boom. So when you think about that, it's like how do how do I not give her honor and reverence? How do I not um, give honor and reverence to the woman that God entrusted his son to be raised by in, in conjunction with St. Joseph? Like, how do I not give them their due? You know, like Jesus had to be protected by Joseph and Mary. He had to be taught, you know, how to be human and how to, you know, live in society and how to, you know, be one of us in, by by mother mary and and her and her spouse her husband so um yeah it's when you think of those terms it's like the god of the universe become a baby and taken care of by these two people not just anybody not to anybody but these two people um it it just uh, it, it kind of it's mind blowing it's mm -hmm. mind blowing so um yeah, I, and I had a. I, she once sh turned up in a dream of mine, years and years and years ago. So um, there's always been a, there's been a connection there for a long time, and and uh, I I love that I've gotten to, um, you know, grow closer to her these last few years as uh, as my faith has deepened. Very good, Colin Carr from Patreon says. I love the way Mary was portrayed in the episode on the wedding at Cana. I also mm. noticed the episode on Peter's call was titled The Rock on which it was built. That surprised me considering the director and leadership are not Catholic and I assume wouldn't see Peter as The Rock. Um, I guess that's just a comment. Yeah. Or is that... Uh, I don't know. Yeah. yeah. Cool. Yeah. Uh, yeah. 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 All right. Jack Skian says, fellow actor here, how do you balance Jack. taking jobs and staying true to your faith? I almost always feel the art culture is at odds with my faith. You know, I feel like the, the culture is, in general, at odds with faith. But then it, ha it comes down to reality what are the jobs you're being offered and if the job specifically you're being offered first of all congratulations on being offered a job because that's a, 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 an effort a feat in itself as an actor to to get a job um secondly um what about the job makes you uncomfortable puts you at dis-ease um makes you uneasy uh there's there's always an opportunity for we have to remember as actors not to judge the characters we play now there's a difference between not ju judging a character and realizing the character like the way it's written and what the the uh creators of the project have in mind for you to do if if there's anything that you feel is compromising your spirituality that's one thing if if you feel like there's 
you know, he's maybe a bad guy. Well, I, I try to find the good. I try to find Christ in all of these characters, right? If they're somewhat three dimensional, hopefully they're three dimensional finding Christ in those characters as you would in any other human being is what allows a character that maybe might behave distastefully in certain scenes to, to at least give you something that you can work with and find a redemption for. And maybe it's just a lot of gratuitous violence or sex or whatever it is. And sometimes, sometimes you look at those and if, if those are the kinds of roles that are being offered to you, offered to you, then you got to decide like whether or not that's good for you. You know, like I, I now no longer can even watch certain TV shows because they're so gratuitous. Like my spirit rejects them. So if, if I were to even audition for a certain show or one or two, two particular shows that I, my spirit is almost offended by when I watch it, because it just seems like, all right, the, the agenda is really dark on this particular program or, or that particular show. If I were to even receive an audition, I probably wouldn't even audition for it because, you know, at the end of the day, you have to live with the decisions you make. And, now, you know, digital is forever. You, you don't want to look back and be like, why did I do that? Did I do that just for a couple of bucks? Mm -hmm. You know, and trust that God, if you're if you're offering and surrendering your life and your will to God, he will provide for you no matter what. I am living proof of this. Like I, my story is that. I was at my lowest point in my life on every possible conceivable level until God got me to surrender my will. And that day, he turned my life around. And six months later, I got booked on The Chosen, and nothing's been the same since. But it took the previous eight years of me getting to that point and being battered around emotionally spiritually and and just making decisions that just were not of god's best for me to realize like i had to stop trying to control the industry controlling my life controlling my career and trying to do what i think i needed to do i and, and check in with god and that's that became the deciding factor so yeah you just discern pray uh surrender and um but also, try, if, if you have the opportunity, try to find the arc where Jesus is with, it, with whatever characters that are flawed. Because, um, you know, I did that, for instance, with, the, uh, with, with Chicago Med, that, you know, the guy was a heroin addict. And I found things that, were, for me, were, were this guy trying to get his life together. You know, it was two scenes, but I had the whole thing worked out. And... For me, it was great. Some people would have been like, how can you take a role as a heroin addict? You're playing Jesus, but don't you? People are like, so what? what? You think Jesus doesn't minister to heroin addicts? Of course he does. Like, he, especially the people that are that are suffering and people that are addicted. And, and you know, there's uh, Jesus is in the mix of the, the grittiest and grimiest of characters. He's always there. So, um yeah, just maybe think about that as you're as you're looking at some of these kinds of projects. Oh, that's great. I got to go to my other daughter. Sorry, sorry everybody in the chat, but it's <laughs> Can't my leave children. What do you out. want from me, <laughs> Kiara Frad, the little rascal who's amazing and beautiful and powerful? She says, Kiara. "What's your favorite thing about being Catholic and favorite thing about acting as Jesus?" Great questions, Kiara. Thank you. Um, my favorite thing about being Catholic is our understanding of the Eucharist and what it means for Jesus to be truly present in, uh, in the Holy Communion. That's my favorite thing. That gives me a lot of peace in my soul. Um, and it just makes everything about being Catholic make sense to me. My favorite thing about playing Jesus, was it? Yeah. Um, I think my favorite thing about playing Jesus is it puts me in a really happy place most of the time when I'm playing it. Um, and even if like there are scenes where I'm sad, it's still coming from a happy place or a joy or, uh, or, or a tenderness for, for people. It makes me feel better about humanity. 
playing Jesus. Beautiful. Anisha says, I'm from Australia too, Matt. Can you ask Jonathan, please, when he is going to visit Australia? I'd love to go to Australia, but I don't think they're accepting us right now or anytime soon. Yeah, so that's right. <laughs> whenever the country opens up, uh, it's been on my bucket list for 20 years to visit Australia. And, uh, and one of our cast members uh, is Australian, so I have an open invite to go hang out with George Xanthus, who plays the Apostle John. So, and we're very good friends as well. So, is it being cool getting feedback from people from all around the world who watch the show? Oh yeah, it's 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 mind blowing to to see how far reaching it's been, and to know that people in third world countries are writing in and just expressing their joy over seeing these characters come into life for the first time in a way that they'd never seen before. So it's, uh, yeah, it's, it's really, really pleasing. It's uh, been such a blessing. Lovely. And she also wants to know which saint writings have influenced you the most in your spiritual growth and who you would like to read more of. Oh, which saint, right. I, um, started reading St. Augustine's Confessions, which is really wonderful. Um, St. John of the Cross has been influential. Uh, St. Saint, Saint, uh, Benedict. Um, and St. John Paul II, of course. I mean, he's in modern times, he's written so much brilliant, beautiful stuff. Uh, who would I like to read more of uh i don't have a specific person that i i want to read more of like I, I, stuff just kind of comes to me through, through osmosis and it's like oh i'll read this now so i i just i like kind of discovering things accidentally i'd say yeah that's that's where i'm at right now yeah that's awesome uh, patron metanoia faith says how has your catholicity been received by so many evangelicals producing the cho chosen maybe not just producing them but i'm sure as you get interviewed more and more people are like wait he's catholic what's been the response uh, from evangelicals and our orthodox brothers and sisters as they've learned that you know it's the response has not been denominational by any stretch it's it's been welcomed it's been ecumenical it's been supportive and encouraging um the subject of denomination doesn't really come up unless people ask me like hey what's that image in the background and i'm <laughs> like oh well i'm glad you asked um you know i've i've i'm i've been um blatantly open about my uh catholicity and uh unapologetic uh, but i'm not trying to shove anything in anybody's face whenever i am praying um and one of the things even just a, a quick sidebar that i love about um working with the guys at hallow uh is that even though it's a catholic app there's so much there that is that is applicable to yeah. christians of all denominations it's it's ecumenical or it's it's catholic in the universal sense and that there's so much that is that people can draw from and uh, for me, you know, I had started praying the Divine Mercy Chaplet yeah. at the beginning of quarantine. And it literally was born out of this desire to answer this call to just give people another tool to uh, expand their spiritual arsenal and then explain what it means and what it is and what we're saying, why we're saying what we're saying. And, and, I, so many non-Catholics are like, that's great. I love that. And, yeah. and people were like, start saying, started buying rosary beads and, and, and saying divine, praying the divine mercy chaplet. And they're not even Catholic. So it's when I think when, when we expand our understanding of some of these, you know, mythological differences that really aren't that different, um, just letting people know, like, again, the reason for the season, right? It's it's all about Jesus. At the end of the day, it's all yeah. about Jesus, and and pretty much everybody that are that is Christian is on can get on board with that. Yeah, I I got some good friends like uh, my friend uh, Cameron Batuzzi. He runs an excellent channel called Capturing Christianity, and 
you know, saying to him, like, look, you don't have to become a Catholic to uh, be able to pray like the Divine Mercy Chaplet. Like you could do that yeah. if you wanted to, like just kind of, you know, and he, he sees the beauty in that for sure. So it's really cool. Yeah. I had heard recently that Rick Warren is a huge devotee the same to, thing. to the uh, Divine Mercy Chapel. It's like, well, I see that. So it's, uh, yeah, prayer is for everyone. It's not just for Catholics or Pentecostals <laughs> or Baptists. It's for everyone. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. And if, if something resonates with your soul, you know, if it works, use it, you know. Um, Ethan Lansang on Patreon wants to know what's one of your favorite books. I don't know if you want to send more people to this book you told me about. <laughs> Get the guy on. <laughs> yeah. Well, do I have it here? I just. Yeah, I, I can pull it up on the screen if you tell me the name. Do you have? Yeah. It. What's it called again? Uh, it's uh, it's called um, How to Be Somebody. That's right. By Mark uh, Mendes, and it's a collection of wisdom from a variety of the church fathers about humility. And it's been one of the most impactful books that I've ever read and continues to be uh, every time I reread the prayers in that book. And uh, you can go to howtobesomebody.org. I'm and showing, order a copy showing everybody book. right now. Yeah. Oh, cool. Yeah. yeah, yeah and, uh, and please support Mark and his ministry because uh, I know he sent a lot of books for free. It's not meant to be sold. Uh, but please contribute to to his ministry in providing such uh, a, a resource of quality and spiritual impact. Um, yeah, it's it's uh, it's it's been a tool that uh, it's been indispensable. And I've I've talked about it to a couple of um, other pastors, like you know, uh, Protestant pastors that had never heard of it, and they they bought the book, and they're like, this book is changing my life, and you know, and it all comes back down to the you know the the, the faith and the origins of, of the faith and and essentially following Christ's teachings. So yeah, can't go wrong with that. You cannot go wrong with it, not at all. And it, yeah, I, I bought it when you told me about it, and uh, yeah, it's awesome. Well, it's a compilation of a lot of church fathers and saints, as you say. So that's awesome. Ah, oh, glory to Jesus Christ. So uh, all right, let's wrap up. What uh, what are you doing tonight? What are you up to? <laughs> What will you be eating, uh, drinking, watching? I will be. Uh, I will be uh, putting. I think I got to go bookshelf shopping. I, I mm. I've been redoing my place, and um, I I just put all my books in boxes, with the exception of this stack here. Yep. And then I was looking and counting the boxes, and like I don't have enough. I have like two shelves. I need to get like a bookcase now. I think it's official. I got to get a bookcase. Yeah. Um. So so I'm gonna be. <laughs> doing some very domestic stuff and then uh, preparing for some stuff I got going on with Hallow this coming week. So very exciting stuff indeed. Very, can you tell us about um, that or no? Um, Just keep a it cryptic. Bit of no. Yeah, a little bit of, little bit of recording <laughs> okay. going on. So uh, it's about as much as I can say for right now, but I, I, I have a feeling that um, um, people will be pretty – um, people have been asking for some of the stuff that we're uh, going to be working on. So uh, that, and then I'm finishing up um, final edits for this nativity play that I helped produce uh, called uh, 30 Minutes BC. Um, I have a, uh, I'm a partner in a uh, nonprofit uh, yeah. Catholic entertainment company called GK Chesterton. Yeah. GK Chesterton entertainment. And we're doing a fundraiser for the company uh, of a very well produced staged reading of this, uh, original play based on the writings of uh, a couple of Catholic mystics, uh, blessed Anne Catherine Emmerich, um, uh, Maria Voltara. Yeah. Um, and, uh, and it was written and directed by a young lady who works with the company and we're uh, very excited to put it together. It's, uh, it'll be, uh, available next, uh, the 12th, I think that's Saturday. So, uh, we're coming down to the wire here and, uh, we're going to be releasing a trailer pretty soon. And, and if people want to check us out, they can go to our website, GKCE. Link in the description. Org. Oh, link in the, yeah, you, right now, you. click that link and check out the the great work that you're doing there. Do you, are you a fan of Cheston? Who isn't really? I'm. I'm. Yes, I am. Yeah, I didn't. Um, the name was chosen by the um, 
the founder of what she so there was a theater company called gk chester theater company and then my business partner maria vargo was the artistic director for uh for the gk chester theater company for like 10 years and then they went dormant for a little while and then she and i met a couple of years later and and then we uh we were producing our own live passion play beginning of the year that we've been doing for years and so to kind of help facilitate that she assumed the title of the company and then when we realized we couldn't perform a live play we decided to pivot with the company and uh, do streaming and and you know filmed media for the time being and so uh so now we're gk chesterton entertainment and uh and so this is the first project uh since the passion play that we're um that we're putting together so very excited very excited oh man beautiful well hey it's been a bloody yeah. pleasure chatting with you uh one Same final here. time if people missed it in the beginning how can they quickly access chosen if they they want to learn more about it when watch the show yeah go to uh the app store or google play download the app called the chosen the chosen um and uh once you download it it's free you can stream it to your tv or your smart device and be watching all of season one today and if you and when you download the app too there's there's heaps of bonus content there's we have three biblical um scholars who do these round tables we have a uh, it sounds like a setup to a joke. We have a, a priest, a rabbi, and an evangelical professor uh, wow. walk into a room and talk about uh, every episode of The Chosen and the theological aspects and the differences and uh, with our director and creator. Um, there's interviews with me. There's interviews with the rest of the cast. Hmm. Uh, a lot of behind-the-scenes stuff. It's really, really cool. Like the, the, yeah, the, the app is one of a kind. So That's um, beautiful. Y- yeah. So thank you. Hey, why don't we close? Uh, maybe we can uh, offer this time and all of our viewers, all those who will watch this to our blessed mother. Um, because of the delay, let's not do the awkwardness where we try and pray it together. I'll do the first half, you do the second half. Deal? Copy that. Okay. Yes, sounds good. Father, Son, Holy, Holy Spirit. Son, Holy Spirit. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much, uh, Jonathan. Really appreciate it. Thank you, Matt. It's been a pleasure, brother. Appreciate it. God bless.